All right, hey guys, welcome back for another video. This is Gene, and I wanted to make a video response to an excellent question that I got from a uh, viewer on my PC12 walkthrough video of the approach and landing. This is from Seatback Pocket, and he asks, question on landing flaps, what is the consideration for when you choose 15 versus 30 versus full? Terminal area traffic, available runway length, trying to make an early taxiway, let's assume no icing. So those are all excellent considerations, uh, although our, our primary factor in determining our flap selection is really just the wind, and specifically how much crosswind we have and or how much wind shear there is in the in the area. So uh, I just want to walk you through a scenario here. I just picked uh, Midland, Texas, because there's actually a little bit of wind out there tonight. And uh, let's sit, imagine we're going to land at Midland Air Park here. So I'll pull up the airport facility directory, <clears throat> little airport sketch so we can look at that. And you can see they've got two runways, 7 and 2.5 and 1.6 and 3.4. And let's assume that we want to land on the longer one, which is 5,500 by uh, 75 feet, roughly. and uh, Or maybe that the north-south runway is closed. So we're going to land on runway 725. And I'll pull up the METAR for Midland. Let's see, which is MDD. And uh, so the wind is actually not too bad right now. It's 140 at 11, and it was just gusting a little bit. And I think if I pull up the last one, you can see, yeah, the last METAR was 150 at 11, gusts 2-0. And uh, so it, it's dying down a little bit, which is typical overnight. That usually happens, depending on the situation. But anyway, so it is a little bit breezy out of the southeast over there. <clears throat> so just for the sake of discussion, let's use this wind value. I'll highlight it there, 150 to 11 gusts to zero. And we'll go back over to the airport sketch. And uh, a quick and dirty rule of thumb for calculating your crosswind component, which is the amount of the wind that's acting as a direct crosswind on the airplane, is that if the wind is offset by 30 degrees from the runway heading, then 50% of its velocity is acting as crosswind component. And if it's offset by 60 degrees from the runway heading, then 80% of its velocity is acting as crosswind component. And then you can interpolate from there. So in this case, um, you know, the wind is, let's see, 150 minus 70 is uh, 80 degrees. So the wind is almost a straight crosswind, uh, which means nearly 100% of the velocity of the wind is acting as crosswind component. So, and we always want to use the gust. So in this case, 20 knots. So, you know, let's say 19 to 20 knots is acting as crosswind component if we land on runway seven. So in the PC-12, in this case, uh, if I were actually going to land on this runway with those wind conditions, I would land flaps 15. And the reason for that is because anytime I have more than about 10 knots of crosswind component for a landing, I'm going to land with flaps 15. And uh, that does a couple of things for us. First of all, it increases our approach speed. So we get a little bit better control surface effectiveness. And, you know, typically if you have a lot of crosswind, there's usually a lot of overall wind or enough to where it doesn't hurt to have the ailerons and the rudder be a little bit more effective as you're as you're landing in those conditions so that's the first benefit the second is that when you have a faster approach speed uh, you have a lower angle of attack so your angle of attack is reduced on the approach which means you have a greater margin above stall and that's a concern if it's gusty and wind sheary because if the wind shears at a sharp angle below the wing suddenly and it only takes a second uh, and you're already close to your critical angle of attack which is the angle at which the wing stalls then the wind can separate from the upper surface of the wing and then you get a stall so it's good to reduce your angle of attack by increasing your approach speed a little bit when there's any wind shear around so uh, and it also uh, makes us a little bit in a better configuration if we do have to go around, right? So again, in these situations, if it's windy and gusty and, you know, there's crosswind and all that stuff, a, the likelihood of a go around is increased. So it doesn't hurt to be already basically in the go around configuration at flaps 15 uh, if you do have to go around. So those are all reasons to land with reduced flaps if you have a good amount of crosswind and or uh, it, there's a lot of wind shear. And I say and or because if there was a lot of wind shear, it wouldn't have to even be crosswind. I mean, it could be right down the runway and if there was enough wind shear, uh, meaning, you know, let's say that the wind was 070 right down the runway um, at, you know, it was a really windy day and it's like 20 knots gusting to 35, <clears throat> even though that there's no crosswind, uh, which in actuality, by the way, incidentally, there will be a little bit of crosswind because typically when the wind gusts, it twists clockwise. So you'd probably end up with a little bit of right to left crosswind if, if that were the, 
the case. Um, but even if it, there were no crosswind at all, just because there's wind shear in the area, I'm going to land with reduced flaps for the aforementioned reasons. So it just gives you a little bit more protection and control surface effectiveness, and it puts you in a better position to go around if you need to. So that would be the, the primary determining factor for our flap selection. Now we also are going to um, think about some other things, and I actually can show you a couple of screenshots here that I took from, uh, these are GoPro videos that I took with a head mount. <clears throat> there's my there's my foot. <laughs> I was getting in the airplane here, and I can't actually show these videos because uh, I would have to blur out the end number placards, which I can't do because there's so much head movement that like the blur can't track the <laughs> the placards. So I would love to be able to show you these videos, but I can't. But I uh, took a screenshot here of the flap lever, so you can see this is in the PC12. Um, this is a Series 10 Legacy, but they're all pretty similar. And we've got four settings, 0 or up, 15, 30, and 40 degrees is full. And to move the flap lever, you have to press that to the right and then uh, move it around and then into each uh, selection has a detent that it'll lock into. And then over here <coughs> is your flap indicator. So that's going to show you where the flaps actually are. So you've got up, 15, 30, and 40 degrees right there. And as I mentioned in one of my other videos, uh, 40 degrees of flaps in the PC-12 uh, is really just reserved for short fields. Um, the PC-12 has very large Fowler flaps, so they create a whole lot of drag at 40 degrees. And um, it's really more drag than you want or need when you have a, you know, a, a normal amount of runway length that you're working with. So there's really no reason to, to land flaps 40 uh, unless you, you need to really reduce your approach speed to reduce your landing roll on a short field. So uh, there's just no reason to, to do it. So typically 30 degrees is what we're going to land at most of the time, or 15 if we have, like I just mentioned, you know, the, you know a lot of crosswind or wind shear. Um, so yeah, and then uh, also in the question, <clears throat> um, terminal area traffic, so that's not usually a concern for flap selection sometimes uh, ATC will slow us down uh, and it's you know the the PC 12 is a single engine turboprop and cruise it's not exactly you know lighting anybody's hair on fire uh, although it's not slow it's not the fastest airplane in the flight levels but in the terminal area it keeps pace with any other airplane um, so you know I mean in the terminal area and I can show you on the airspeed indicator here <clears throat> Your red line speed, which is the you know, V&E, is 236, and routinely I'm doing about that uh, in, the, in the terminal area, so long as I'm not under a 200 knot airspeed limitation, so that would be within 4 nautical miles, below 2,500 feet, AGL of a Class C or D airport, or below Class Bravo, uh, then you're going to be slowed down anyway if you're that close in. But, you know, sometimes I'm screaming down at 236 knots, and... Um, you know, I'm gaining on airliners, right? So ATC sometimes will assign you speeds of 210 or 180, which are pretty typical speed assignments that everyone in the terminal area, if you're flying into a busy class B or C terminal area, is getting those speed assignments from airliners to, you know, PC-12s. So um, <clears throat> you don't really need the flaps to, to slow down. Um, I can slow the airplane down, flaps up comfortably all the way down to, you know, 120 knots. I mean, at that point, I might have flaps 15 in just because, uh, but you won't usually need those just to slow down. So um, another note on that is that the, the flaps, when they extend from 0 degrees to 15 degrees, take 22 seconds to extend. It's a really, really long extension cycle on that first one, on that first notch. And that's because uh, it can't exceed the rate that you can trim. So they designed it that way on purpose. Um, and then from 15 to 30 and 30 to 40, it goes pretty quick, just a few seconds from there. Um, so typically we go 0 to 15, you know, uh, within maybe 7 miles of the airport, uh, just to get them out because they do take so long. And the VFE speed for flaps 15 is 163. So you can put them out pretty early and not, you know, slow down too much. So... Uh, anyway, and then uh, the other questions were available runway length. So again, uh, that's definitely a consideration on short fields. We would use <clears throat> flaps 40 on those. And a short field in the PC-12 is pretty darn short. Um, I have landed the airplane on, uh, let's see, I think the shortest runway I landed on was maybe like 20, 
600, 2700 feet, which isn't like super short, but it's definitely not long. And you know, I use a short field technique at flaps 40 with a little reverse thrust just to be safe uh, on that runway. Um, but you know, the airplane can land in like 1500 feet, no problem, no problem at all. So, and then trying to make an early taxiway, uh, sure, you could use flaps 40 for that. That's not really something we normally do. Uh, you know, when you're cleared to land, the, the whole runway is yours, and it's usually just a better operational practice to not, um, you know, not try to get stopped in too much of a hurry and put wear and tear on the brakes or flat spot a tire or throw things around in the cabin and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. We try to just keep it comfortable for the passengers and everything, so, and just go easy on the airplane. <clears throat> and then uh, the icing um, factor uh, is is also a concern on the PC-12. Uh, in fact, if we have any ice on the airframe at all, uh, we have to land flaps 15. And that is our limit, uh, and that's you know there is a variety of reasons for that, um, but Pilatus does does make that a limitation. So if you pick up some icing on the descent uh, and you can't shed it before your your uh, your landing, then you actually do have to land flaps 15 with the pusher in ice mode to get a little bit extra protection with the shaker pusher system in the airplane. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's basically how we choose our, our flap selection for landing. Uh, these considerations aren't, of course, just limited to the PC-12. They work in uh, airplanes of various sizes. Uh, it's always a good uh, rule of thumb to have a specific crosswind component cutoff in mind for when you're gonna land with reduced flaps in any airplane. So, you know, maybe you fly a Cessna 172 and you're, you know, deciding if you want to land, you know, flaps, your, your first notch or your second notch, your third notch or whatever, uh, have a specific crosswind component that you have calculated that you, that you know ahead of time that, hey, if the crosswind component is more than this number, let's say seven knots or 10 knots or whatever you're comfortable with, then I land with reduced flaps, you know, 20 degrees of flaps or whatever it is. So it's, it's best to have a, a specific formula that you use instead of just kind of winging it and saying, ah, it's kind of windy out there today. I think we'll land with reduced flaps or, you know, whatever, because it's good to standardize that stuff. That way you're not, uh, you're not going to, you know, make a bad call uh, out there. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. So hopefully that answers your question there and uh, seat back pocket. Thanks for the question. Uh, if you have any other questions, guys, please let me know in the comments. Hit that like button. Subscribe uh, if you like this kind of stuff. And thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.